Kia ora koutou. Hi everyone. I'm Dr. Harriet Richards and I'm a lecturer in fashion enterprise at RMIT University here in Melbourne. Uh, previously, I was um, a research associate in the School of Culture and Communication at the University of Melbourne, and I joined RMIT in June of this year. I'm also the co-founder of the Critical Fashion Studies Research Group and co-host of the Critical Fashion Studies podcast. I would um, like to begin by saying thank you so much for Dor to Doris for inviting me to be a part of this amazing event. Uh, the first of many in the Global Fashioning Assembly over the weekend. Um, it's such an incredibly special coming together of thinkers and makers um, in Aotearoa here today and then later, of course, all around the world. And I only wish that I could be in Tamaki Makaurau with you all um, in person today. But alas, I'm here in Melbourne in Nam. Before I tell you a little bit more about me and about my work and kind of why Doris asked me to join you all today, I wanted to first um, acknowledge the Woiwurrung and Boomerang people of the Eastern Kulin Nation as the traditional custodians of the unceded lands on which I live, work and learn and from where I'm zooming to you now. I pay my respects to Wurundjeri elders past and present and to any Indigenous people we might have in the room with us here today. As a Pākehā New Zealander, um, I feel a particular sense of gratitude to be able to call the lands of the Wurundjeri people my home. And I feel so honoured to be able to participate in events such as these, which extend long-standing traditions of knowledge sharing, uh, celebration and, um, and gathering together. So let me begin. Uh, I moved to Nam, to Melbourne, um, <clears throat> in 2010, as I was taking a break from completing my undergraduate degree in, the, in international relations at um, Victoria University in Wellington, and then beginning my postgraduate study. Since then, I've kind of boomeranged backwards and forwards between these two homes. Um, across the Tasman, remaining incredibly closely connected to my home in Tasman near Motuika um, and my second home here in the big city in Melbourne. My PhD research, which I completed at the Institute for Culture and Society at Western Sydney University, um, <clears throat> was preoccupied with trying to understand New Zealand cultural identity through fashion. But I was looking in from afar. I was here um, and I was looking back to, to New Zealand, to Aotearoa, and I developed um, over that time, I guess, something of an outsider perspective. Not immersed in the culture of Aotearoa, but watching it shift and change from here, from afar. I was also seeing the fashion industry in Australia change really quite rapidly. When I first moved here, um, there was, and I'm, I'm not really exaggerating, absolutely no recognition of Indigenous fashion design or creative talent in the fashion industry here. Um, and that has changed, thankfully, uh, quite rapidly over the last 12 years since I first moved here. Soon after graduating from my PhD in 2018, I had the great pleasure to take part in the Rethinking Fashion Globalization Seminar at Bunker University in Tokyo, and that was in 2019, well before the pandemic struck. The event was organized by the Research Collective for Decoloniality and Fashion, the RCDF. The RCDF calls itself an experimental platform beyond institutional, disciplinary and geographical boundaries. And it's the RCDF who, of course, um, have spearheaded this global fashioning agenda. It was established a decade ago in 2012 and aims to challenge prevailing Eurocentrism in the fashion industry and the Euro-American focus of fashion studies. The work of the collective critiques the denial and erasure of a diversity of fashion systems due to unequal power systems and relations based on a modern colonial order and the exploitation of cultural heritages and natural resources. In 2021, the previously informal global collective transitioned into a not-for-profit foundation, which is registered in the Netherlands. 
The foundation consists of a supervisory board chaired by Professor Jose Tunison at the London College of Fashion, an advisory board chaired by Associate Professor Ronaldo Vazquez at Utrecht University, and an executive board directed by Dr. Angela Jensen, an independent researcher based in the Netherlands. Um, and you can see Angela there at, in the front row, in the middle, in the front row, crouched down, um, very instrumental in organising this event in Tokyo. The GFA, this event that we're participating in today, is the first large-scale globally networked symposium to take place since the RCDF became a foundation. The event that I attended in Tokyo was the third in a series with a conference in Morocco in 2012 when the organization first commenced and in Hong Kong in 2014. It was designed as a small single room event so you didn't have to go to parallel sessions with 16 papers presented over two days. The papers presented a very broad range of perspectives from the academic to the entrepreneurial. Rethinking the power structures of the contemporary world in relation to fashion systems, the event was really an opportunity to come together and share new visions for understanding the meaning of fashion and the role of dress cultures in all of our lives. The mandate put forward by the RCDF coming from a decolonial perspective to rethink fashion from, um, as a multitude of possibilities has had a significant impact on my own thinking and academic practice. It's perhaps one of those things where we really only understand the impact and the power um, of, or quite how profound that impact has been when we look back um, after the event <clears throat> and see what has come since. Since that 2019 event, I've published a couple of pieces of writing um, that build on my PhD research and demonstrate how my thinking on the issue of decolonization and fashion in Aotearoa, New Zealand are evolving. Um, in late 2019, I was invited by a colleague at the University of Melbourne, Dr. Kalissa Alexiev, to contribute to a special issue that she was co-editing um, of the journal Critical Studies in Fashion and Beauty from Intellect. The issue was published in 2021, and I was so thrilled when the editors also requested that Damien Nakora's incredible photograph of Chanel Taylor wearing Kitty Nathan at the Great Wall um, in China for the Kahui Māori Fashion Collective's second hikoi in 2019 was included on the cover of the journal. It was um, pretty amazing to have that requested and for Damien to agree to have that image included. Um, also published in 29, uh, 2021 sorry, um, was the book project that emerged from the symposium in Tokyo. And this was co-edited by Sarah Chang, Erica de Greff and Takige Yoko. Uh, Yoko Takage. Uh, my chapter in the book incorporated some of the work I presented in Tokyo, as well as expanding out to look at the work of some practitioners um, who actually are joining us here today. Kitty Nathan and Bobby Campbell Luke, whose work is, um, I argue, actively decolonizing the fashion system in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Reflecting back on my work and the work of the RCDF as I was putting together this presentation, I recognize the great advancements that have been made in fashion practice and fashion scholarship since I moved to Australia 12 years ago, and since I started my PhD eight years ago. Here in Melbourne, we've just had the Melbourne Fashion Week. Um, and unlike even five years ago, Indigenous designers are well and truly part of the fashion landscape here in Australia. In fact, I would say one of the highlights of the, the fashion landscape here. The Gunbumara runway, uh, which happened just the other day, for example, was one of the, the real highlights of Melbourne Fashion Week. Not only that, but Indigenous creatives, photographers, models and stylists are working increasingly behind the scenes. And this, I think, is particularly important to point out. It's not just designers and the work of these designers being shown on runways, but it's actually First Nations people being involved at all dimensions of the fashion industry behind the scenes and behind the camera, as well as in front of it, which really means that they're, they're shaping the future of the industry here. 
and, and shaping the way that fashion in this country is really understood and celebrated. All this thinking is coalescing into the book project that I'm currently working on, which investigates the impact of settler colonialism on fashion and dress cultures in both Aotearoa and Australia. So kind of using my perspective to look at the two contexts side by side. I recognize that one of the things that's missing from the conversation about decolonization in fashion is a deep understanding of how colonial systems have shaped fashion in settler nations like Aotearoa and Australia, and how the contemporary advance of Indigenous designers and dress practitioners fits within changing ways of negotiating these systems. And as I continue to work on that project, I'm informed by the critical work of the RCDF and deeply inspired by events such as this, the Global Fashioning Agenda uh, Assembly, which practice the important work of decolonization as a global collective, not as something individual. So I'm really humbled to join you here today. And once again, I'd like to say thank you so much to Doris for the invitation. And I so look forward to hearing from everyone over the course of the afternoon. Nga mihi nui. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.